Uh, welcome to Brightline Bites Live. My name is Becky. I'm part of the social media team here at Brightline Eating. And what is Brightline Bites Live? If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're completely new to Brightline Eating, let me give you a little quick synopsis of what Brightline Eating is all about. In Brightline Eating, we follow the four bright lines, which are no flour, no sugar, we only eat at mealtime, no snacks, and three meals a day, and um, everything is weighed and measured. So all of our portions are weighed and measured. So those are the four bright lines that we follow in bright line eating. And bright line bites um, started really as a hashtag. You can search bright line bites on Facebook and on Instagram and find lots of great recipe ideas um, from our community, great meal ideas, great um meal prep ideas. So definitely take a look if you're new for um, Brightline Bites, hashtag Brightline Bites on Facebook and Instagram. And we started Brightline Bites live because we get a lot of questions from our community, especially from people who are new. We get questions from our community about how to meal prep, how to cook meals, what kind of foods they can eat for dinner, for lunch, for breakfast, et cetera. They need meal ideas. They need some help with their meal planning. And our goal in Brightline Eating is really to have peace around food. So it takes the food chatter out of the equation. You have automaticity with your food and you can then have the freedom to live the rest of your life free of that food chatter and that just constant struggling with your food. We take it out of the equation so that you can have peace and the freedom to live the rest of your life and focus on the things that are really most important. So <clears throat> to um, help anyone who's new or who needs some new ideas, or a lot of people come into Brightline Eating, um, they're looking to lose that excess weight because they maybe don't know how to cook. They don't know how to prepare their own foods. So, you know, they've, they've been eating restaurants or fast food their whole lives and they need some, you know, basic food prep technique help to be able to make those healthy, bright meals. So that's what we're here for. That's what I'm here for. So what we are going to be making today. Oh, but one more thing. Um, all of our Brightline Bites live videos can be found on our resources page. There's a link up in the description for the resources page. That's brightlineeating.com slash resources. You can on that page find um, all the Brightline Bites live videos. Also other recipes, Susan Pierce Thompson's videos, uh, Facebook live videos and webinars and podcasts that she's done. Um, there's Brightline Day tracking sheets. There's a link to the Brightline Eating Emporium, which is where you can get these awesome cozy sweatshirts. Um, so there's all sorts of stuff on that resources page. It is um, really got a lot of tools that would be useful to check out. And especially if you're looking for more meal ideas and food prep ideas, definitely head over there and check it out. So now without further ado, what we are making today is a Dutch oven chili. Now, this is more of an advanced recipe, I would say. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for beginners, but it's a great technique to learn. It's great to see. It requires some estimating, which is why I would consider it an advanced meal. Um, you would not want to try this probably if you're, if you're brand new. Wait eight to 10 weeks, which is the length of our boot camp. Wait eight to 10 weeks, get eight to 10 good bright weeks under your belt. And then you can maybe try some of these things if you feel called to. If this meal does not work for you, that's fine. You don't have to make it. <laughs> the beautiful thing about Bright Line Eating is you can use the tools that work for you and leave the rest. So if uh, chili is something that you think would really work for you, then by all means, check out this technique. And um, I am a Bright Liner as well. I've been doing Bright Line Eating since July 2nd, 2018. So I've been around a while, I've tried some different chili techniques. And this particular recipe, um, I have to credit my husband for this recipe. We like to camp a lot. And when we're camping, we tend to cook in a Dutch, we tent camp and we cook in a Dutch oven on the fire. So he came up with this recipe to make it compliant so that we could cook Dutch oven chili while we were camping with our kids and everybody could have a meal that they enjoy. So this is a great meal 
Um, if you are comfortable mixing, the, the reason it's an advanced recipe is because you have to estimate a little bit because the men's and the women's proteins are different, which I'll explain that. And um, you're gonna be mixing your protein in with your vegetables. So your finished dish is gonna be kind of estimated. You're not gonna guarantee to have the exact amounts in there, but we're gonna make the whole thing, six servings mixed together. And then you can um, uh, weigh out your portion when you're done, which I'll explain all that when we get to it. But that's why I would consider this an advanced recipe. In the past, I've made chili where I've cooked the vegetables, separate from the protein and then uh, weigh them all into one bowl. And that works great. But if you're maybe cooking for a family, cooking for guests, or if you're out camping, <laughs> um, this is a great way to make chili. And I would consider it compliant because we're gonna weigh and measure everything. And then when we're done cooking it, we're also gonna weigh and measure it into our bowl. Okay, okay, you with me? All right, so um, this, recipe, my husband had found this Dutch oven chili recipe. We modified the amounts to make it compliant. And you don't necessarily need to cook this in a Dutch oven. I do have a cast iron um, Dutch oven here. And that's what I like to cook it in. I also, I'll go through the ingredients. We like to make it with as many fire roasted ingredients as we can. So that especially when we're cooking indoors and not out cooking on the campfire, um, it still has that uh, nice, yummy, fire-roasted flavor to it. So the Dutch oven helps that. Using the fire-roasted tomatoes and peppers in this helps that. And then, um, oh, but if you don't have a cast iron um, Dutch oven or any kind of Dutch oven, you can definitely just make this in a big pot, a stock pot, a soup pot. That would work fine as well. Um, Okay, so uh, also one more thing, if you are cooking for a family or guests and you wanna make chili for a meal, it's wonderful because you can measure it out and have your bright line meal, and then you can serve it with a side of something else. I, I serve this for dinner with a salad on the side, and then I'll add some sort of bread product for my kids to have with it too. Um, Cause I've got little kids and they like the chili, but they also like to have something else with it as well. My husband and I all have a salad alongside it and we've got a bright meal for the whole and a meal for the whole family and it's great. So I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly, but I will put the recipe uh, up in the description once this video is done and we'll post it, we'll share it to Facebook. Um, the, I'll put the recipe up there as well, but you'll see as we go that this recipe is kind of variable. It'll make sense as we get there. So what I have in this chili is, um, I've already browned two pounds of ground beef. It's in my big heavy Dutch oven over here. Let me see if I can show you. It's hot because I already had it on the stove top this morning. I've browned two pounds of ground beef in my Dutch oven. I'm gonna uh, measure this out in a minute. I have taken two cans of kidney beans. I have light kidney beans and dark kidney beans. I've drained and rinsed those. Um, usually we also make this with black beans. Today I've got two kinds of kidney beans. It's pretty um, versatile. You can use whatever kind of beans you have on hand or whatever kind of beans you like. Let's see what else I have. So I mentioned I like to use a lot of fire roasted um, ingredients. My store happens to sell fire roasted diced tomatoes. They're amazing. If you don't have fire roasted ones, that's fine. Regular diced tomatoes is fine. I have a big can of that, 28 ounces. You can also use two of the smaller cans, which are usually 14 ounces. Um, also, I have two bags of peppers here. We like to use these peppers just because they're tasty. You can use any kind of diced peppers that you like. We happen to use the, I say we, cause usually my husband makes this chili. <laughs> but I'm making it today for you folks. Fire roasted red bell peppers I have. This is a 12 ounce bag. Fire roasted poblano peppers I have. This is a 12 ounce bag. Sometimes we use fresh, fresh poblanos, um, whatever suits your taste. The poblanos do add a little bit of spice. I also have two large onions here that I've um, chopped up into kind of, you know, big pieces not too small. And um, then we have some seasonings here. So I have, oh, and minced garlic. You can mince up fresh garlic as well. Whatever you have on hand is fine. I have chili powder, cumin, 
oregano and some smoked paprika and some sea salt. If you would like your chili spicier, um, some other uh, peppers that we've tried in here include um, chipotle powder, uh, ancho chili powder, you know, you can season it to your spiciness preference. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, those are the ingredients. Okay, now we're gonna get started measuring this chili. Now, the first thing that I've done is drained and rinsed these beans. And this was the first thing that I measured. So that, there is some math required here. <laughs> that um, measurement is what I'm starting with as my baseline. I took two 15 ounce cans of beans, drained and rinsed, and measured out what I had. And I had 18 ounces of beans. Now, 18 ounces of beans, because we're going to be splitting our protein, half beans and half meat, a serving, a woman, a, a woman or a man serving of beans is six ounces. Half of that is three ounces. So because I have 18 ounces of beans here, I have six servings. Bear with me. I actually got a whiteboard out here so that I could explain this. Um, so for beans, we have three ounces times six servings. So we've got 18 ounces going in. You see this, is that backwards? Can I put it down here, is that forwards? Okay, now next we're gonna do our meat. So let me see, I'll set my beans aside for a sec. Next we're gonna do our meat. So a women's serving of meat is two ounces. So for six servings, we would put in 12 ounces total a men's serving of meat is, sorry, a women's serving of meat is four ounces. So half of that is two ounces because we're splitting our protein here. A men's serving of meat is six ounces. So half of that is three ounces. So six servings of that is 18 ounces. Now, if you are only cooking for women, what I would do is I would put Oop, where are we going? This is hard to do backwards. Um, if you're only cooking for women, I would put in 12 ounces of meat. If you're only cooking for men, I would put in 18 ounces of meat. I am going to be sharing this recipe between men and women, so I would average this out. The average of 12 and 18 is 15 ounces. So I'm going to put in 15 ounces of meat so that when we're done, we can um, when we're done, we can measure out men's and women's portions and have enough in here. So I'm going to turn on my scale. I have my OXO digital scale here that I'm going to measure this into a bowl. What I like to do is um, measure everything into a bowl, then dump it into the pot to make sure that everything is weighed and measured properly. I have a lot of stuff on my counter here today. So we have a lot of ingredients. So bear with me a second. So we are measuring out 15 ounces of meat. And I'm prob I had already browned two pounds of ground beef. So what I am probably going to end up with here is a little bit of extra meat, which is totally fine because then I can set that aside and use it in something else later this week. Or somebody else in my family can eat it. Um, if you want to, you can, um, if you have extra meat, once you're done cooking, you can throw that into the freezer. A good rule of thumb that I've found from cooking meat and um, weighing and measuring my meals is that your meat will cook down by about 25% roughly. You can kind of estimate that. I still weigh and measure it once I'm done cooking, but that just helps you to figure out approximately how much you're going to want to cook to begin with. So I have 15 ounces of ground beef here. I'm going to dump out the rest of this meat into another dish to replace it, as I said. And then I'm going to start putting everything into this Dutch oven. So actually, I'm going to start. This oven just goes right on the stovetop. 
And when we are, once we get to cooking this, sorry, this is kind of noisy. Once you get to cooking this, what really makes this chili extra tasty, besides cooking it in the Dutch oven and cooking it with those fire roasted ingredients, is um, we just let this simmer for hours. I'm in Eastern time zone in the US. It's noon here, it's 1220. I am going to put this together and I'm gonna let it simmer all afternoon for four or five hours. And the flavors just mix and mingle together. And this is gonna be amazing for dinner tonight. Really looking forward to it. Okay, I'm putting my Dutch oven on the stove top. Let me see if you can, if I can move this a little so you can see. There's my Dutch oven on the stove top behind me. So I have my beans. I'm gonna throw those in. I have my ground beef. I'm gonna throw that in. And that's your protein. That's your protein for this meal. The beans and your meat. Now, okay. So now we need to do vegetables. I'm just gonna rinse my bowl really quick because there's a little bit of meat left over in it. And I wanna use this now to measure my vegetables. So let's talk vegetable measurement. Get my whiteboard out again, I feel like a teacher. Vegetables. You are going to have six ounces of vegetables in here. So that means that when this is done, you'll be able to eat this for lunch and it will count for your protein and your veggie. And we're also going to put condiment in here. When you are, um, if you look at your meal plan, uh, which you can find in the Brightline Needing book, or if you do a boot camp, it's downloadable. If you do the 14 day challenge, it's downloadable. Um, two ounces of salsa or marinara or tomato products are um, count as a condiment. So when I'm making this chili, I like to count two ounces of the tomatoes as condiment. So together, your vegetable and your tomato condiment is, let me get my bowl out of the way for a sec. Six ounces of veggies and two ounces of condiment. So that's eight ounces times six servings. We're gonna put 48 ounces of veggies in here. Okay, with me? All right. I'm moving kind of fast, but this will be posted up on the Brightline Eating Facebook page when we're done and um, shared on our YouTube and you can rewatch it and, um, and I'll post the recipe with the amounts that I'm using here in the description when we're all done. Okay, so I've zeroed out my scale. I've got my bowl here to measure my ingredients into. The first thing I'm gonna do is put the tomatoes in because that's a fixed amount and I wanna use all those tomatoes with the juice. And I'm just going to now keep adding vegetables until I get to 48 ounces. It's that simple. You know what, I just noticed one of these onions had a little bit on it and wanted to cut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these onions in. And then I'm gonna start putting my peppers in as well. And I'll kind of add a little bit of each just so that I'm sure that I have a decent amount of everything until I get up to 48. So those are the fire roasted red peppers. These are the fire roasted poblanos. I think I'm gonna do some more onion. and maybe a little bit more of the roasted red peppers. Oh, 0.1 ounce over. There we go, 48 ounces of vegetables. And now I'm gonna throw those in the pot. I'll move my camera so you can see that. I'm just gonna stir this up because 
the beans were sitting on the bottom of the pot and I don't want those to burn. I wanna get the tomatoes and the tomato juice into the bottom there. So that's all combined in my Dutch oven now. And now the last thing that we need to add is just the seasonings. So I'm going to use a little bowl here. You don't need to measure this um, because spices don't need to be measured. I just, I, I have a tendency, it's funny, I've noticed uh, after doing Bright Line Eating for over two years that I have a tendency to set every dish on the scale, <laughs> no matter if I'm weighing it or not. Um, I'll do it with my kids' plates. I'll do it with, you know, dishes like this where I'm not weighing and measuring. I'm not weighing these seasonings. I'm just going to measure them. So we're going to do three tablespoons of chili powder. One. Two. Three. And as I said, you can adjust this as you like, um, but I would definitely try it this way first. If you want more spice, you can always add uh, more of something. Cumin we're going in with next. This is two tablespoons of cumin. One, two. One tablespoon of oregano. Don't know. Oh, this is a brand new bottle of oregano. Let me see. There we go. Or if you're in Australia, this is oregano. <laughs> that was one tablespoon of oregano. Now we're doing one tablespoon of smoked paprika, again, with that smoky fire roasted flavor. Love it. One tablespoon of smoked paprika. And I find one of the best ways for me to um, make sure that I stay on my program and I'm really focused is to have just an arsenal of really great recipes and meals like this that I can use. Um, you know, that I can just put, what are we gonna have for dinner this week? And you know, we can throw chili out there and have one or two meals of chili and it's great. So having some recipes that I like that are easy and that my whole family can enjoy is really important for my program. And I would imagine it's the same way for a lot of people. Two tablespoons of sea salt. I mentioned the sea salt, I think in my last Bright Line Bites Live or maybe the one before that, this is Malden sea salt and I just love it. And then four tablespoons of minced garlic is next. First, I'm going to blend up these seasonings so that they're kind of evenly blended throughout. So I'm not gonna get a big clump of any one seasoning in my chili. And then I'm gonna stir that into my pot. And you can come with me. There we go. And I'm just gonna stir it up a little. The reason that we left the juices and the tomatoes, because some people might be wondering that, is because you do need some moisture in your chili to keep it wet. Um, otherwise you'd have dry chili. Okay, last thing we're gonna do, four tablespoons of minced garlic. I like to be very generous with my garlic. Four tablespoons, minced garlic, there you go. By the way, this is garlic packed in water. You can also get, you can chop up uh, fresh garlic if you'd like, minced fresh garlic. Uh, garlic press is a lovely tool to have. Um, if you buy the minced garlic in a jar like this from your grocery store, definitely look for it packed in water so that you're not adding extra fat to your meal um, because some minced garlic does come packed in oil. Okay. 
And we're going to stir that in. Okay, I'm going to let that sit, uh, sit for a minute while we talk about um, portioning this out once it's done. And then um, I will show you what the finished product looks like as well. And also I'll put pictures, once this is actually done cooking, I'll take some pictures and put that on the Brightline Eating social media on the Facebook page and Instagram. So um, this chili, as I said, you're gonna wanna let it uh, simmer for at least an hour is good. Um, the longer you can let it simmer, the more delicious it'll be, the more the flavors will kind of mingle together and it'll just be fantastic. Um, as I said, I'm going to let this simmer for the rest of the afternoon and then have it for dinner tonight. So it's gonna sit there and simmer for a good few hours. Um, as long as you keep the burner on low, uh, you can't, you really can't overcook this, you know? Um, as long as you don't burn it, <laughs> keep that burner on low and just let it simmer for at least an hour longer if you can, a couple hours would be great. Um, so how are we going to serve this? Take these servings that we did and portion out bowls according to what we have already measured. So for a women's serving, we've got three ounces of beans plus two ounces of meat, which is five ounces, plus six ounces of veggies, which totals 11 plus two ounces of condiment, which means 13 ounces for women. For men, they get one extra ounce of meat. So that's gonna be 14 ounces for men. And that's what I'll do. And I'll have peace with that. As I said before, if you, um, if you aren't comfortable with this idea of having your different types of food mixed together in one dish, by all means, do what works for you. That is the beauty of the program. Tonight for dinner, what I'm going to do, this is my protein and my vegetables. I will measure out a 13 ounce bowl. Then I will add a fat because that's what you get on the weight loss program in um, uh, the dinner. For, sorry, for dinner, weight loss program dinner, you add a fat and a salad. So I will have a fat alongside this. I might put two ounces of avocado on top of my chili. I might put one ounce of cheese on top of my chili. I will have an eight ounce salad alongside this. Maybe I'll put olives on black olives on my salad for my fat. I'll pick one of those and I'll have the chili with the fat and the salad. And that's my bright dinner. And my husband will have the same thing, but he'll weigh out a 14 ounce bowl instead of a 13 ounce bowl. Show you the chili so you can see what it looks like. So there it is. I like using, I like to, um, I like having the white onion in here and the red peppers and the green peppers. It just makes it pretty. And that's always fun to have the various colors in your food. So that's what the chili looks like. As I said, I'll post pictures on social media when this, you know, tonight when I'm having dinner and I get it into a bowl. And if you are interested in more recipes, seeing the other Brightline Bites lives, I think this is the fifth or sixth one that we've done. You can find those at brightlineeating.com slash resources, along with a whole bunch of other awesome resources to support your Brightline Eating program. So thank you for joining me today. And as I said, keep an eye out once this video is done and posted, I'll add the recipe and I'll be posting pictures later of the finished product. It's already starting to bubble back there and it's smelling good. I gotta get the lid on so that can simmer for a while. Thank you for joining me and thank you for all your comments. And I hope that you all have a wonderful, lovely, bright day. Bye.